you at plus one. So awesome. in theory, people can see it. Great. Enjoy. Well, let's Excellent. drink some Gamay then. Gamay! Oh, go I just Gamay, go, the chair. as I say. <laughs> I'm a big proponent of the hashtag go Gamay, go. Okay. It was started by my friend uh, Janet Dorozinski, who's the, the, um, who works for our federal government and is heavily involved in getting Canadian wines promoted, not just in Canada and from all regions in Canada, but also into uh, other countries. Mm -hmm. So she's, she's the person, you know, introduced our wines largely to Chances Robinson and all these kind of people. And so, uh, yeah, but uh, she loves Gamay, as do I. So I even, do as well. <laughs> yeah, it's, we're not going to, I don't think we're going to do a big lecture on Gamay. We're just going to taste really, but just, I like it because it's really light and it has good acidity. It's one of those fresh red wines you can drink. Um, you don't want heavy wines with tannins. It's just uh, kind of a nice, fun wine usually and good with a lot of foods, you know? Right. It is. And yeah. I like it because it can be light, but then if you go into more like the crew areas, if yes. I'm Beaujolais, then you can get these little bit more interesting, spicy, richer style ones. Right. Yeah, Cru Beaujolais is one of the best bargains in the wine world for people who want kind of premium light red wines. Like they want, they want to drink something like really good Burgundy, but they don't want to spend the big bucks. So you can get Cru Beaujolais and it's very similar and sometimes actually better. And uh, I really like it, yeah. So what are you drinking tonight, Craig? Well, I'm drinking a wine I have never had before. Can you see it there on the screen? I have, Jean. Yeah. This is, Jean? it just says Jean Gamay Noir. Jean Laurent is a, uh, he's a French producer who's fairly known to, fairly well known to people who are into kind of the natural wine movement. He, I don't, I'm not sure if he's a, I'm not an expert on this producer, but I, I do think that they, they have a history of, you know, sustainable farming and kind of not uh, overly uh, uh, involved winemaking, like trying to just let the, the wine come out the way that the land intended. And, uh, as we've talked about before in, in some of our seminars, you know, with, uh, with some of the, there's not really strict rules, although there's some coming maybe regarding natural wine, but it's more of this sort of non-interventionist way. Now this, this is not, it doesn't say, it's kind of interesting. It doesn't say Beaujolais on it or Burgundy, even though we know Gamay Noir comes from the, the Southern part of Burgundy, Beaujolais and, maybe some from in Burgundy in itself. It just says Vin de France. But mm. uh, I was looking on their website and it's actually uh, planted around the Dijon area. So I don't know, there must be some legal reason why he's just calling it Vin de France. I don't know. Excellent. But um, I'm using this crazy Riedel wine glass that they were sent me it's to so me to cool. evaluate them. Weird shape to them this weird double curve thing. They're really meant for Pinot Noir and Nebbiolo, mm -hmm. other light Gamay, structured Pinot Noir. red wines. But I thought it would work well for Gamay. Excellent. And, um, it's a big glass. You can almost put a whole bottle of wine in there. <laughs> That's awesome. It's huge. But it, wow, what an aroma. Now I wanna, I'm gonna do a comparison of this glass with other uh, wine glasses for some Pinot Noir. I think I'm going to use Malavoir from Niagara that we have here in Ambiel right mm -hmm. now. But holy jumping. It just tastes like um, a raspberry jam cookie. You know those <laughs> cookies with the jam in the middle? The jelly cookies. Yeah. It's super intense on the fruit department. No, I don't know how much the glass affects taste. It's, I think it's more of aromatics, probably. 
but this is a really juicy kind of soft gamay. Not sweet, but in fact, it has some good structure to it, but mm -hmm. it's really good. This is way better than I was. I didn't know much about this one when I bought it. I've had that one before. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it is. Oh my gosh. It, it's pushing all my buttons right now. I'll tell you. It's got the, <laughs> uh, you know, that raspberry fruit and good acidity and it actually has a bit of structure to it and like a slight amount, whether it's tannin or just acid, but wow, it's really good. And I had chilled this a bit in the fridge. I should add, you should always chill a gamay, you know, five, 10 minutes in the fridge before you open it. Anyway, I'm giving this wine uh, more thumbs up than I have. So I think uh, you I'll should buy you. it. <laughs> what are you and doing? I, I just so see like... a comment saying that you can also get it at the NSLC as well. Oh, good. Which is wonderful. Oh, it's, 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 this is the kind of wine And you can I get love. it here at A&BL too. can't believe I haven't um, had this wine before. Yeah. Anyway, what are you doing? Yes, you, can, you should be able to Ed, get it at uh, A&BL as well. Um, yes. Now, I, uh, I don't know if you can get this wine at AMBL right now because I did pull it. I've had this bottle for a while. I am actually drinking a Cru Melon Avant from, um, I'm going to say his name wrong here, Johan Lardy. So he, like what Craig was saying, is one of those producers who has been kind of started out in like um, Chile but really on the biodynamic side of wines, which is really fun. So they still look at doing those practices like low intervention and things like that. And like Craig mentioned, if you want to learn more about our lecture we gave on natural wines, you can find that over on our YouTube channels. But uh, yeah, so this is Moulin Vent Les Michelons, and I've already poured some, and this one happens to be a 2016. And I am not drinking from my normal Rydell glasses because for those who missed it, I'm in Pointe de Chien at a cottage and jumped on board after I ran back from the beach. <laughs> but the aroma on this is really fragrant. You've got some floral. You've definitely got those red fruits like that raspberry, that strawberry and cherry. And we actually have a bowl of cherries sitting over here and I'm like, that's what it tastes like. Those like really ripe cherries. It's so juicy. And there's a spiciness in it, which I thought was really good in terms of that. I likened it to geranium, like on the nose, because it gives you that geranium's not just floral. It kind of gives you that earthiness and spicy note to it as well if you brush the leaves. And on the taste, it has really good structure. There's something still going on in this wine. It's a little zingy, and it hits you like mid-tongue on the sides where it's like tingly aspect. So it's got this good acidity to it and uh, good structure and a little bit of tannins. They've definitely softened a bit, but I could have probably left this in the bottle a little bit longer as well. What's the vintage on it, Charlotte? This one's a 2016. Right. And we, I, I know we can age Moulin Vol sometime. Mm -hmm. I think you can probably get up to 10 on it. I don't know if I'd go pushing on that but I, I think you can really get five um, I find one of the things that's interesting in those like Grand Cru areas is with how they're like south facing slope they get more sun blah, blah blah which everybody knows but that soil and I can't think of that pink granite what that yeah. name of it is right now but one of I the know, things it's for sure yeah but it's like this pink color but in that area they also have a lot of magnesium and Magnesium isn't great for uh, grapevines, but in this case, it really is because Gamay is one of those like vines that is high vigor, like it can grow and produce things. But I find that maybe that soil composition in those Grand Cru areas or in Cru areas, like give it that little bit more of fight for your life aspect. So it's a little bit lower yield and they produce possibly a better grape that can be used in a better wine. Mm -hmm. That's a really, the, the whole Cru Beaujolais thing I, was one of the most interesting things I learned about in when I took the SOM program back in the 
whatever, 20 years ago, is that, you know, I probably, my knowledge of Gamay before that was largely uh, Beaujolais Nouveau, you know, and then taking that course and having uh, different wines from the different crews, you know, the different granite outcroppings, a lot like mm -hmm. the, the granite and the, um, you know, and the Madoc, that kind of idea of top wines coming from the, those soils with the good drainage and heat retention. But then having these wines that were very similar to the, the Burgundies that we had tasted, the Pinot Noir based wines, and uh, it made me a lover end of these wines and I've, I've stayed that way. And I always try to push them and buy them and <laughs> encourage AMBL to, to sell more of them. And they have, over the last three or four years, we've seen um, quite a few more uh, good Gamay yeah. wines from France come in, so it's been good. And even from Canada, too, we have some good Canadian producers. So I think I really Gamay like is the a one from Trias. more respect. Yeah, I'd like to do one of those like tastings of the Gamay from each of the crews. Now, mm -hmm. the only winery that I'm familiar with that does something that is, um, and now the name has totally left me, Piron. Well, we had some Piron before. Though. Yeah, and they had They're like the gone. Cherie Blues and Moulin Vin and all of those, which yeah. I found, and I did get to taste them, but not kind of all in a lineup. Yeah. Which I think would be a really interesting thing to do for p folks who want to learn more about that area. Especially looking at yeah. the same producer, because they would typically use that same style of winemaking, perhaps. Yes. Yeah, the the crews don't use carbonic maceration, so you don't get that. Um, you know, they use traditional fermentation, like you were making a mm -hmm. Pinot Noir in Burgundy. So they don't. You don't get the bubble gum and the banana and, and that stuff that you get in. Basic There's Beaujolais definitely or, none of that on this. <laughs> yeah. No, it's a. You know, I. I I don't want to make it sound snobby, but it's kind of like it's a serious wine as opposed to just a fun wine. But that doesn't mean it isn't fun because it's still, even when you make it the traditional way with skin contact, etc., it's still not going to be, you know, very tannic. It's going to have that nice fruit you were talking about and the elegance, and it's going to be a, a light, kind of fun, but still somewhat serious wine. I was just looking for something white to put my, and mine, like the color on it is kind of more on that garnet cut leading from the mm -hmm. ruby. Oh, the one I'm drinking is so young. The, uh, the Jean wine, I think is, it's actually a 2018, but it, it's so young and fruity. Like I, I don't think it's similar in that many ways to a crew but it it's definitely also not a a simple banana bubblegum gamay it's it's got it's somewhere in between anyway it's a really good wine and i think that um i'd be i find it hard for somebody to not like this wine i mean if you are looking for a big tannic monster well yeah clearly this isn't where you're going to go but but if you, I can't see how somebody couldn't find joy in this wine, honestly. That's awesome. And how's it working out in that fancy glass you have? Well, it's hard for me to say the effect of the glass because I didn't have it in a different glass. <laughs> I mean, when you, the problem with evaluating glassware, as I'm sure you know as a wine professional, is that it's not truly blind. You know, no. How do you do a truly blind nose and taste analysis of a wine? in different glassware, it's impossible because you're open to the suggestion of, the, you know, what do you expect when you, you, you see what's in your hand, you see the glass. So Great. it's super hard, but uh, I'm going to try to do it um, sometime this week with a, with a Pinot and try to be a, as objective as I can. Oh, fun. But I, I certainly do think that, I mean, we know that a big glass, whether it's, like this with the weird shape or or just a big round bulbous glass that it you get more aromatics there's no question we know that but i have uh, the big round bulbous glass <laughs> yeah 
but whether or not this one is different from like I have several of those big glasses that can hold you know over a half bottle of wine you know what is it about this glass versus those other uh, glasses mm -hmm. that are supposed to be for Pinot Noir and Gamay you know what is what is it about this one that's different so yeah it's very hard to be objective All I I'm know still is like that, incredible yeah, with that acidity here. Well, the, the thing about these glasses is the, the stem is so thin. Look at it. Oh, that it, is. It gives me great fear in terms of hand wash. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Yeah. So is Christine going to wash that one? <laughs> well, you know, last year I went to the... Uh, the Moncton Wine Show, that, or not last year, two years ago, when they had their, I went to the Riddell seminar, mm -hmm. where they, and then you get a set of glasses. I know. End, I was so, glasses, had no idea. It was so narrow. And we only had, actually, they're all gone now. They're all broke. Because oh. in hand washing, you have to be so careful. You do. And I have to tell you, uh, we, we don't have a dishwasher at our house. And there are times when the glasses get washed and I'll be somewhere and I'll hear a glass break and yeah. I instantly know it's my ride out. And I'm like, yeah. I die a little bit inside knowing that. Yeah. Unless it's the really, they have a, a line that is really solid and dishwasher friendly and harder to break. But when you get into the really premium ones, you have to be super careful. I mean, they're yeah. beautiful and they have gorgeous balance. Well, I love them. that one. Yeah, it has gorgeous balance. Like the way it sits in your hand, you feel safe. You know, it's not going to, but uh, yeah, it just, it feels fragile as well. And I'd like to try it with Nebbiolo too. It says Pinot Noir Nebbiolo on the uh, Well, on the, uh, you base. know, we could probably get together and try that out. Yeah, I've got two of these. I have a collection of Nebbiola. Oh, do you now? Hmm. I'm not an Italian wine snob or anything. <laughs> I actually looked for a, some decent value, either like a long A or, a, you know, a, a, without having to spend the, the Barolo or Barbaresco dollars on ABL, but I didn't really see anything at the moment. Um, I do love Barolo, but it's, as you know, it's kind of expensive here in New if, Brunswick. If we have any of the Antonori uh, long one, it's, it's decent. Mm. I do love an aged Nebbiolo wine. They're so beautiful and fragrant. So what's so your verdict on that last. Gamay? What's that? I said, what's your verdict on that Gamay? On the Jean? Yes. I love it. I think, I think it was around $20, like maybe 22 or something. Like for that price, this wine is, as I say, it's, it's, uh, it's a winner for me, for sure. Absolutely. Excellent. Yeah. I don't know whether I'd age it, but it's a wine that it's just so it makes me very happy to drink at the moment. So we did just have a question. Someone asked, uh, when did this start? We did start at eight. This is kind of our trial run because next week, right, Craig? Next Saturday? Yes, next Saturday at three. At 3 p.m. We're going to be doing Wines of Germany. Yes, we're going to be doing a, uh, it's going to be sponsored by Wines of Germany. We're, we're doing it for them. And uh, each of us is going to be tasting three different wines. I'm going to get mine from Nova Scotia Liquor and Charlotte's getting hers from a and mm -hmm. And we're going to just taste and talk about some diverse, interesting German wines. And I think we're capped at one hour. I believe so, yeah. I'm going to have to set a timer. Yes, we might have to do that. So this is kind of our like dry run, if you will, where we actually got it to work. We did it a couple times today. You did it solo to try to like make it work, I guess. It's more of a wet run than a dry run. But, <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Good one. <laughs> anyway, but it seems to have worked, so we should probably sign off, I guess. It's been about a half hour. Yeah, and there are some... Uh, Vincent is asking uh, where 
we might be able to order the wines. I think he's talking about the ones of wines of Germany that we'll be talking about. I think there's going to be a post out talking about yes. that on both our sites. Yeah, we're going to tell you which wines, the wines specifically that we're gonna, drinking. Yeah. yeah, mine are going to be only for people in Nova Scotia, I'm afraid, but but yeah, and then, Charlotte's will be here. Yeah, so we, I think we got approval on it too. Yes, we did. Yeah. Excellent. Somebody was saying that uh, Instagram kept telling him that uh, Craig was live. So awesome. That Instagram is very annoying <laughs> with all its prodding. <laughs> all right. Excellent. Okay, well, well we're off, I think. Cheers. All right. Cheers. Enjoy the rest of your game. Eh? Thank you. You as well. And anyone else, whatever you're drinking, enjoy. Cheers. <laughs>